In this video, we are going to look at the process of running a multiple correspondence analysis, or MCA, using the open source software Jamovi. Let's start by understanding the data and what kind of data is appropriate for this kind of analysis. The survey that we are using for this example was one that asked participants to mark all that apply on a variety of topics where the choices are categorical or nominal. The questions were things like, what hobbies do you have from this list? Mark all that apply. And then the choices were things like gardening, reading, cooking, hiking, and they could choose one or they could choose none. They could choose as many answers as they wanted. And then we restructured the data so that rather than what are your hobbies being one variable, we took each of the possible choices and made it a variable where hiking would be a variable and then yes or no in that column. You'll understand better what we're doing if you have a big picture overview of what's going on here with the, the MCA. The MCA is really just a powerful technique that helps us make sense of complex categorical data. And here in our data set, we have many variables. We have variables related to hobbies, weekend activities, book preferences, etc. And what the MCA is going to do is going to reduce the complexity of this data by identifying underlying patterns or relationships between these variables. And it does this by grouping similar variables together into a smaller number of new variables. And these new variables are called dimensions. And each dimension represents a combination of the original variables that are related to each other. For example, here the ones that I've color coded could be related to each other in this way. Now we're ready to begin using Jamovi. And we're going to use two different modules that both have MCA in them. One is this MEDA module that I have here on the menu. And the other is Snow Cluster. And if you don't have these, I don't know why I don't have this on the menu, but if you don't have these, go to the Jamovi library and you can find the modules that you want and install them I'm using the desktop version here. If you have your data on your computer, you need to bring it into Jamovi. So open, and then just browse till you find it. And I'm using this MCA example file here, and it pulls it in. Before we start the MCA, it's important to first ensure that our variables have enough variability to be meaningful in the analysis. So to do this, we'll start by running the frequency tables for each of our variables. So we go here to Exploration and choose Descriptives. And all of our data is nominal or categorical, so we don't need these mins and maxes and standard deviations means and medians, but we do want the frequency tables. And select all of our survey variables, and then Jamovi does the frequencies for us here. And we have 60 responses. Let's just see if we have 60 on everything. We do. We have no missing data. And then scroll through here and look at the percent totals. And look for anything that has like less than 5% of the people responded that way, because that would mean there's not enough variability in that question to distinguish between the people. And so far, oh, there's one. 97% of people do not like fantasy books, and 3% do. So this doesn't have enough variability in it. And we so we'll want to not include this variable in our MCA. And everything else looks OK. Yep. Now we get to do the MCA. So let's use the MEDA, M-E-D-A module, and select multiple correspondence analysis. And it keeps what we did before, and it's going to start a new analysis here. You probably want to read this, this read me before running 
has good information in there. And our active variables are the survey responses that we want to run this analysis on. So let's remember to leave out the fantasy books because there wasn't enough variability. So we choose everything else. And we're not using the ID, age, or gender. We could use those as categorical supplementary variables or not. A category represents a specific choice someone could make. So for instance, in our survey, choosing a mystery or fantasy, those are categories, the choices. So the selection of categories setting, this setting helps us decide which categories to include in the analysis. Some of the categories might be very common or strongly related to others, while some might not add much value. So the selection of categories setting allows us to set a threshold, kind of a cutoff point, where only the most relevant categories are included. For example, if we set the threshold at 0.10, only categories that contribute significantly to the analysis will be in included. And this helps us focus on the categories that really matter. The ventilation level is similar, but works in a broader way. Think of it as a way to clean up the data by getting rid of categories that aren't very important so we can concentrate on the ones that are. So a good place to start is by setting the selection of categories at 0.10. This means you're including categories that have at least a 10% contribution to the analysis. And it's a balance between being inclusive and focusing on what's important. And the ventilation level, start with a moderate setting. And then if your results seem to be too cluttered with lots of minor details, try increasing the threshold for selection of categories or raising the ventilation level. Now let's scroll down and look at the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues represent the amount of variance or information that each dimension captures from the data. So this column lists the eigenvalues for each dimension, and the higher the eigenvalue, the more important that dimension is in explaining the patterns. If you look at the percent of variance column, this column shows the percentage of the total variance that each dimension explains. For example, dimension 1 has an eigenvalue of 0.298. That means it explains about 29.8% of the total variance in the data. So dimension 1 captures the most significant pattern in the data. And then if you look at the cumulative column, as you move down this column, it adds up the percentages to show how much of the total variance is explained when you combine multiple dimensions. For example, the first two dimensions together explain 48.1% of the total variance. So you can look at these eigenvalues and decide how many dimensions are important. Here are dimensions 1, 2, and 3 capture the most significant patterns in the data. So as we move to lower dimensions, the eigenvalues decrease, and so those dimensions explain less variance and they're less important. So for this analysis, let's keep five dimensions because that explains 75% of the variance. And I've changed the number of dimensions here to five to keep five dimensions. The default was two, so I changed that to a five. For each of the dimensions, we get an automatic description of the dimensions. So let's look at the one for dimension one. What this table does, it helps us understand which variables are the most strongly associated with this particular dimension. And it provides two important pieces of information, the R squared and the P values. The R squared value tells us how well the variable explains the variation within this dimension. So when R squared is closer to one, it's a stronger relationship between the variable and, and the dimension. So if you recall, what's going on here is the variables have been identified as which dimension they contribute the most to, and they're going to be combined to make a new variable for that dimension. So how does this work to create the new variables? This next table here, the link between the variable and the categories of the categorical variables, it gives you the value for each response of the variables that contribute to this dimension. So weekend activity, going out with friends, if they answered no, they get this value here, the 0 0.541. Uh, the next one, staying home, if they answered yes, they get 
the same value, 0 0.541. Some of these are negative, like for example, social spending time with family. Spending time with family, no. So it gives a category and then the response. That would be a negative, and then those are all added together. So this kind of illustrates how the new variables are created. If this person, if the one on top answered no to family, yes to staying at home, and yes to cooking as their hobby, the number associated with no for the, for the family, those would be, you know, you'd look in that table, that second table, and get the numbers. You don't have to do this. The computer does it for you. But this is how it computes the new variable. And then if someone else answered yes, 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 they would have the numbers associated with answering yes to those questions added together to create a new variable. So the computer is going to compute the new variables for you. This information is here for each of your five dimensions because we chose we want five. If you check this box here, save coordinates, it adds the, the numbers that it computes for each dimension for each of the responders to your data set. So if we look at our data now and scroll to the end, it has added these variables where for each person that answered the survey, you've got their value of dimension one, dimension two, etc. You can see this person is negative on dimension one, this person is near zero, and this person is near one on dimension one. So we're going to classify the people into clusters based on their dimensions. Now notice that dimension two is made up of different variables. These have to do with what types of books and what types of exercise. So you can look at the variables that are included in each dimension and come up with a description and a name for the dimensions. Now here's a better use for AI than writing haikus for you. I pasted in each of the variables that comprise each dimension and asked it to give a suggestion for a name and then describe the attributes of that dimension and give me details along with justification. I pasted screenshots of the output into AI and asked it to suggest names for each of these dimensions and describe why it was suggesting those names and what sorts of attributes. And it came up with these five dimensions for the data. So our variables are being reduced to representing five different dimensions. And now we want to look to see how are the respondents clustered, like how many different kinds of people are there based on these variables or based on these dimensions. So the clustering option here, the default is set to negative one for number of clusters. And what the negative one does, you could set the number of clusters, but if you leave it at negative one, it will determine the number of clusters that the data actually aligns to. Um, if, if you are using data where the theory, there's already theory that says there are six different kinds of people or whatever, then you could put that to six. But if you don't know, just leave it at negative one because it will come up with the clusters based on the data. So leave that at negative one and check that you want representation of the clusters. And you want the cluster variable, save cluster variable, because that will add the cluster variable to your data set, which will help you interpret things. So scroll on down. And here it's it's graphing dimension one against dimension two, and it came up with three clusters. And it's graphing dimension one against dimension two because that is what is set up here. And what we see is cluster three is everybody's positive on dimension one. This is like a coordinate system. And the numbers that were generated for each dimension are positives and negatives. Everybody in dimension one is, or everybody in cluster three, the green cluster, is positive on dimension one. And cluster one and two are negative on dimension one. And then you see there's a variety of positive and negative on dimension two for the cluster threes. Almost all the cluster ones are positive on dimension two, and almost all the cluster twos are negative. And then if you want to see 
dimension one against dimension three, change this to a three. And it will regraph it and show you how they fall on dimension one to dimension three. And dimension one, it tells you, is almost 30% of the variance. So you probably want to just graph everything against dimension one to get the most information. And you can right click on here and you can export all of your output of the description of how the dimensions are calculated. And so I'm going to export it as a PDF and save it on my computer. And you can also, I already did that, and you can also export your data. And our data now has the cluster membership. It tells whether each person who took the survey is in cluster one, two, or three. So we are going to export that data, which I've also already done, so that I'll have this Excel spreadsheet that gives everybody's dimension characteristics, their dimension value, and which cluster they're in. And to help you interpret your clusters, use AI. You can check it, but at least you have something to check. You don't have to look at all those numbers and come up with this yourself. But I sorted the clusters in the spreadsheet, and I just only gave it cluster one, because you don't want to overwhelm AI. Also, don't ever trust it to do your math but it's good at looking for patterns. So I gave it the data, just the dimension numbers, the new variables for cluster one, and asked it to describe cluster one based on this data. And it came up with this description, that cluster one is characterized by individuals whose preferences and activities align closely with the first few dimensions. And then it tells what those dimensions are and gives a justification. So if you do that for each of the clusters, you have a good start in interpreting your output. So there's some work to do to interpret all your results. But nobody ever said expect this to be easy and work free. Um, I just want to show you the snow cluster has some features that are actually better. Each one has some features that are better than the other. So you go up there, open the multiple cluster analysis from the snow cluster. You have to put your variables in. So remember, we're skipping the one about fantasy books. All the information will be the same here. But you can get a scree plot where you can't get one in the other module. So if you need your scree plot, and you know you right click and you can copy export. And then the other thing I like better about this, your variable categories. This is that same information that is given individually for each dimension in, in the other module, in the MEDE module. But here it's so much easier to read. It's a table with each dimension, and it gives you each of the responses next to each other so that you can see the difference in dimension one. Hobby reading, yes and no, how much it matters to say yes versus no, etc. So based on where people fell on these five dimensions, they fall into these three clusters that can be described these three different ways. So I hope this was helpful in helping you understand how to run one of these, what your data needs to be organized like, and how to interpret your results.